languishes in poverty, not because they don't lack intellectuals to run the affairs of the country. They are there. And we know because we are Cameroonians and we know what's happening in our own part of the country. Not because we lack intellectuals. They are there. So what do we lack? What do we need in academics? We need a crop of intellectuals, a new crop of intellectuals. And I see them in these two that we are celebrating today. A new crop of intellectuals that despite the fact that they have acquired academic knowledge or know-how, they keep their humanity. They keep their humanity. They are people of character, people who have empathy, people who perform in their different fields with hygiene. Those are the kind of people we need in our society for us to eventually fight poverty, fight crime, fight sickness and disease, and get our economies performing so that everyone will be happy. When we look at what is happening now, we know there's a lot of controversy around the COVID. Some say it was created in China by scientists, well-read scientists who have lost their humanity. Some other scientists say they are coming up with a vaccine. And they tell us that vaccine will be used to alter our DNA. Whether it's true or false, ordinary people like us don't know. But one thing that is problematic is the fact that we lack scientists with hygiene, who have character, who still have their humanity intact. Why I say this now, this is not what I intended to say, but it happened that uh, there are a lot of people in academia here. When they did the introduction, I had a lot of well-read people. And I also saw some that were not introduced, but I know them. It's good for us to know this, that there's a lot of trouble in the world. Not because we don't have people who are knowledgeable in the fields that they are, but because they don't practice it with integrity and with hygiene and with character. And the only way or the only place you can get that is when you go closer to God. Let the word of God be your guide in your profession. When you make a decision, a professional decision, you ask yourself, is this helping humanity? Is that what God says I should do for the good of humanity? And if your answer is yes, then you go ahead. If the answer is no, then, then you don't do it. I say this because I see the work that these two laureates have been doing in our community. And I know they are people of character, they are people of hygiene. And I pray that what they have started doing in the Bihin community, they should do that in a larger perspective. They should extend that to the entire world. And like that, we will start seeing the world getting better every day. Sometimes people say, I can't change the world. No one expects anyone to change the world. If you change, one person, that's the beginning of changing the world. By the time we put, by the time we put all the individual changes we have made, the world would be a better place. So don't undermine the effort. There's mystery in small beginnings. So you start from somewhere and it will grow bigger. Once more, congratulations and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam President. To continue, I am going to now call on. Wow, okay. It's somebody I normally know, but the way it is written here, Atanto Da 
into more. Put your hands together. Thank you. Thank you. Special welcome to all of you, our special guests. Um, special greetings to from our very honorable chief who came to um, see his colleague uh, celebrated. Allow me to tell a little story, and I'm going to be very chronological. Queen, Queen Dr. Jane, yes, she did is known in the family as Mami Science before she became a doctor. In every single topic that is put in the family forum, Jen goes into science and pulls something and brings an argument. Specialist. So she is one of those, just like our president rightly said, who will not be an ordinary doctor. She will be a game changer because her world is about looking for solutions. Let's please put a hand for her. Now let's go to the queen, to the king. When the king was finishing his primary school, the mother went to school. He was forced to relocate to the village. When children are going to school, he leaves home, going to school, and ends in the bush. <laughs> when the kids are coming back, he gets a number of them well beaten. <laughs> So he was feared by many when he was growing up. Again, remember that the mother went to school, so he suffered some years because of that transition. So he wrote his ordinary letters with a younger sister, Princess Delphine, who was right here with us. When results came out, I remember very well, a comment of Gideon Taka said, Delphine has